So I'm uh, Fran Sherman and I have been, um, I'm a professor at Boston College Law School and I have been involved with JDI for quite a while now, consulting on issues of young women and detention, young women in the justice system. And I am here with two panelists, Lena Two Carter, and Lena can wave there. Lena is um, the assistant coordinator of uh, Straight Ahead Minister Ministries, which is based in Worcester, Massachusetts. And um, Lena connects young women with services and really meets with young women around the state who are involved in um, our justice system. So she goes into the majority of juvenile justice facilities we have here in Massachusetts meeting with young women and has been doing that for around three years. Uh, she's a mentor, she sets them up with services and she's gonna talk a little bit about what she does. And she also for the, um, from, for this presentation is um, on the advisory board of IMY and has been involved in this project really since we started thinking about it. And so she's really a uh, founder um, with others. And uh, we also have Sharifa Garvey here. And Sharifa is a JDI coordinator for Suffolk and Bristol County in Massachusetts. So she's one of our uh, regional coordinators in Massachusetts where she supports JDI committees and um, in those two counties, and for those of you who don't know, Suffolk County is Boston. So um, just, just so that you have a sense of, of the work that she's doing, she's been doing that with JDI Massachusetts for um, one and a half years. So the three of us are gonna, just to give you a sense of what the goal of this uh, webinar is, what we're going to do is introduce you to IMY. And if you haven't already done so, our website I think is pretty useful and good and it's the place where we're storing all our tools and it's imy.org. You don't have to look right now, but we're gonna show you some of these tools and, and talk about IMY and the goal of it, but also think together about how IMY, its approach and its tools might be able to be value added to our JDAI partners. And to do that, we're really gonna talk about the way we're trying to pilot those tools in Massachusetts and what our experience has been in Massachusetts. But before I do that, I actually, since not all of you chatted in where you're from, I'd love you to do that. But also, if you wouldn't mind just chatting in, um, do you have experience with youth engagement in your work, in your systems work? Have you been working with young women in your system? Anything that you could just kind of provide? I, I do really want to use this chat function a little bit um, and see if we can make this a little bit interactive. We're a, we're an intimate group here of people, so clearly it's a self-selected group of folks really interested in this issue, and it would be nice for everyone to, to see who each other is and what their experience is. So if you want to just sort of chat in, are you, um, you know, have you worked with young women in your system? Have you been sharing power? Are you involved in youth engagement? That would be great. Um, I'm gonna, oh, hold on a second, I forgot I'm in charge of these slides, so let me just, oops, hold on a second, I'm gonna, Advance. Yeah, we go. Okay, so um, let me just, just by way of introduction, and then I'm going to move and, and turn it over to Lena to talk a little bit to also introduce sort of the issue. But essentially what IMY is, IMY has been around, we've been sort of working on this idea for a couple of years now, since 2017. And it began with the thought that we wanted to influence systems and essentially policy practice and program so it's shaped by young women so we wanted to facilitate young women's increased power right both individual and collective and also persuade systems to share power with young women and we're going to talk a little bit more about how we're doing that imy is not imy is not in itself a campaign it's designed to really be value added to programs to uh, systems to folks who are interested in working on a power shift so that young women are really shaping the systems that impact them. And, you know, to underscore how important that is and how our current systems really are not structured that way, we thought we'd kick it off by asking Lena, um, who, you know, spends lots of time with young women in systems to, to talk a little bit about her experience, the work that she does, and what it is teaching her about how young women in our systems are currently experiencing those systems. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lena for that. Thanks. Hi everyone. Once again, my name is Lena and thank you for joining us um, 
it just hears out. Um, um, I'm actually was one of the kids that was in the system myself when I was young. Um, and I always wanted to find a way when I, once I age out of the system, I wanted to find a way to be there for the girls the way that I wanted somebody was there for me when I was young. Um, and I got the opportunity to go in the facility and um, to meet with the girls one-on-one -on -one and make myself vulnerable to them because the biggest thing that they do was trust issue. So um, they never really get to ex fully express themselves or express what they have been through because a lot of people around them, what they've been through has, you know, just listen to them and not really do anything. If anything, they make the matters worse for them. Um, so I got the opportunity to sit there, able to put myself up front and just share my story where I've been. And most of the time they can relate to half of the things I've been through. And um, I also give them an opportunity to let their voice be heard and share without being judged, uh, without really finding a solution. Because you know, um, even though some of the stuff they share was already known or some of the stuff are not known, it was just a relief for them to able to talk about that and able to talk in their voice and not because of somebody telling them how to say, tell their stories. Um, so what I have learned a lot from them is that um, they would never really encourage to able to use their voice. So like the stuff that they'll come in and talk about, they don't know how to approach it or how to advocate for themselves. So um, I try to encourage them and try to show them a way to how to advocate for themselves and how to ask questions. And that's one of the things that they struggle with is not knowing how to ask the right questions um, to understand what's going on in their situation. And um, also what I have learned is um, a lot of time when they get out is they don't really have the support. Um, you know, many times DCF, which is, um, you know, um, the system have tell them, oh, when you get out, you have these lined up, but that usually fail when they say, oh, these things are lined up for you. It doesn't really come together and time will be taken way too long before things actually come into place. So a lot of time they are discouraged um, you know, or there, there'll be time frame where there will be no time frame. They are told that they will be locked up or they're going to a foster home or they'll be going to a program and um, not knowing when they're going to return back to their family. And then, you know, a lot of promises have been made by the system, but was never really been fulfilled, like even family therapy and things like that. Um, so I have learned, you know, so much from them, what they've been through but also learn that, you know, they were never really taught how to use their voice um, effectively. And, um, and that's why I'm proud to be on this project because I am why is a way of showing young women to really how to speak their story and share their story so other can hear through them. So we can able to change certain things, how things are operating. Um, but yeah. I'm not sure if I'm, if did I cover everything, Franz? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I just unmuted. Yeah, no, absolutely. That was great. And, and uh, one of the goals that you'll see when we talk about um, catalyzing a power shift, so young women shape systems, for, for us, that is a matter of increasing young women's individual power. So a piece of what Lena is talking about, you know, is that the young women that she's working with that we see in the system don't, are, are sort of, feeling disempowered individually, but also we're trying to increase their collective power. And what IMY is building and the way it's structured is around teams of young women who serve as consultants, who do workshops together to try and build a national network of young women. And we're gonna talk more about that in a moment. So thanks, Lena, I appreciate that. Um, what we are doing, sort of the way we're going about our work is through three bridges. So, um, as I said, IMY is trying to be value added to systems, to allies, to projects. Brian, that work. Yep. This is Brian. It seems like the uh, the presentation is a little bit wonky for some reason. Do you mind uh, unsharing? Oh, wait, there it goes. I think that is working now. So whatever you better? just clicked on there. Yeah, it is better. Now, now I'm seeing everything. Sorry to interrupt, sorry, but I wanted to make sure that people could see uh, what was on the slides, but it looks like everything's showing up now. Okay, if there's, if anyone else has a problem, please click in. It was, uh, I had a box over it, so good. Okay, great, I'm glad. Um, anyway, you know, part of what, I'm glad you can see the slide, because the slide really talks about the vehicles, if you will, that IMY is using to try and catalyze this shift in power, to try and expand young, young women's power and connect it to policy, practice, and programs. And those bridges, there are three of them. The first is a methodology that connects young women's experience to policy, practice, and program. So we're really a young woman's experience-focused 
effort. So we want young women to be talking about their strengths. It's a positive experience. We want them to talk about their strengths. People don't need to rehash their story or talk about you know, how they got to where they're going. We want it to be centered in what are your strengths? What is the change that you envision? And that's really the center. We have workshops that we do, and we're gonna show you a video and talk a little bit about those. We have research that really sort of makes this connection between young women's experience and policies that work. And we are working through developmental principles. Uh, five in particular, identity, relationships, rights, self-determination and leadership. And we've built out these principles because they're generated by the young women as key principles for them. Um, we have a set of communications tools. And if you go on the website, I'm gonna run through one, I think if we have time. And, um, but if you go on the website, you'll see what they are. Brochures, PowerPoints, everything's videos. We're gonna look at that next. Everything's very centered in young women's lived experience and how that experience makes them the experts really about what's gonna work in terms of practice and policy. And these are all available generally on the website for you all to be using in your own work. And then the last sort of bridge, the last way in which we're connecting, we're trying to catalyze shared power is through direct engagement. So we have teams of young women who are doing all this work, leading workshops, doing technical assistance remotely, um, uh, building our curriculum for our workshop, building an exhibit. And we're really organized around these teams of young women with adult allies doing the work that is the body of the work that is IMY. We're building right now a mobile exhibit, so more on that later, that we'd like to you know, share around and have available for people as a conversation starter, as a uh, type of direct action um, in service of some kind of campaign uh, for a change in policy, uh, however, and that's, that those are things as well that we can talk about. So if all this works and the result is, and I keep putting that up on slides because I keep needing to sort of focus in, what we're trying to do, our goal, is that young women's power will increase both individually and collectively. Systems and allies will be sharing with young women. And if that works, then policies, practices, and programs will work better for young women because they will be driven by young women. Um, and by young women's vision, and they will be reflective of what the young women are, are, what they need and what they've experienced. So I thought we could kind of do this in action, and what I'm gonna do is play a video, and this is one of our tools, and it um, is, is uh, focused on a young woman named Jasmine who lives in the Bay Area and works with the Young Women's Freedom Center, um, which, which is an extraordinary program. And, and what I want you to think about, we're gonna look at the video together, if this, hopefully this will work, and, what I want you to think about is what is she telling us? IMY is about listening to young women, hearing what they have to say, and then trying to connect that to our work, all of us being sort of those in conventional positions of power. What is she telling us about what we ought to be doing differently, about what would work for her? So I'm gonna play that now, and if there's any problems with the playing, uh, Brian or someone just chat in and let me know, okay? Okay. Hey Francine, it does it does seem like we're not getting the audio. Um, I think what you'll need to do is unshare, and then when you share, make sure to hit those two buttons down at the bottom of that pop-up window uh, that uh, tells the computer to share the the audio. Okay. All right. Now, what am I supposed to be hitting here? All right. So now that you've shared it again, let's go ahead and just hit that play button in the bottom left and we should be in good shape. Oh. I wanted to have a family because I've never had one. I was feeling very lonely. I was feeling very 
depressed. I would feel like suicidal at times. I'm like, where's my parents at? Everybody has somebody they could call on in a rough time. I was living in foster care and I was nine months pregnant. I had her a month before my 18th birthday. I feel the system has failed me at being a young parent. I've been through 20 placements, and this was from 12 until 17. I was like in five different placements just in that time of my pregnancy. They placed me in this foster home, and the lady didn't even have food in her refrigerator. I had to go through spilling out of stores, like shocking up with boys so I could be myself. I had to have a kid to be recognized. Nobody even paid attention to none of the bad stuff I was doing until I had a kid. I don't want her to be in the same boat I was in. Something got to change. I was in a domestic violence situation, and they found the tender one for me, like the housing and stuff. It was a big change for me. I don't feel like my kids growing up is safe. You're always hearing the ambulance. Someone's probably overdosing on the side of the street. I've seen that like a couple of times. For so long, I thought I was the only person going through this. A lot of youth have had the same exact experiences that I've had. That's what made me want to stand up for people. I know I always imagined myself being able to use my voice for powerful things, especially for chocolate women. Tomorrow, I'm doing a lovely workshop called I Am Why Workshop with eight other young ladies and basically being able to talk about what do we imagine and what do we see in the future for girls growing up like us. What I would change about the system so it serves the next generation of women after me is put more community into the system because if you're not living in the community with me, then you don't know what I'm going through support my daughter Winnie so she doesn't become system involved would be from school give her time give her caring as if you would want somebody to be successful because if I was somebody looking at a young black queen growing up I would be very patient with her understanding and just to give her the power <laughs> Great, I wanna make sure. So I'm gonna assume people were, people heard that, yeah? I, I seem to have lost along the way my chat uh, box, so I can't really see uh, what people, oh here, hold on a second, I'm gonna, I wanna get it back in, because I wanted to see what, um, great, I, I got my chat box back. Uh, can everyone still see my screen? That All that looks good? So what, what I'd love, you know, um, is to hear what she's telling us. Is that if anyone is willing to chat in any thoughts they might have on what they're, what Jasmine told us, and and maybe um, I can ask Sharifa and Lena since they are here with the voice capability to talk a little bit about what they saw in the video. That might be a way to to go here. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that stands out um, as you look at this video, I think this is, a, this is my fourth or fifth time watching this video, is how, you know, um, Jasmine, she talked about having to have hit, I guess, like rock bottom, which was, you know, her being pregnant um, for the system to finally really get involved and say, you know, let's, let's support this young woman because there's a child involved. Um, and it's just really unfortunate that I had to get that far for there to be um, the appropriate action taken to provide her with the resources that she needed um, to support her um, her child that was coming into this world. And um, I believe she said she went through 18 placements um, while she was in the span of her pregnancy with her daughter. So that's, that's we're, we're seeing this gap, especially with supporting um, young women and uh, it's even more difficult when it comes to women of color and the struggles that they experience in the system. One of the things that does come through here, I think very clearly, is her sense of identity. You know, that she is a 
a powerful black woman. She is, has a very strong, she's a mother, she is an activist. She has a very strong sense of her self-identity and that is where a lot of her power comes from. So one of the things you wanna see is systems supporting those identities. And I put up our um, guiding principles and, and really this comes from Jasmine and many of the other young women who've done these workshops, you know, it, embracing a young woman's varied identities and life experience honors who she is and supports what she can become. And that really does, is a principle that comes from this. Um, any other, Lena, do you have any thoughts about the video? Um, I mean, it just made me think about my own life. Um, even though I didn't, you know, I was a young mom myself, I didn't really, you know, I was away for the most part, um, those years of my son's life when I, after I had him, cause I was in the system. Uh, but I'm trying to put myself in her shoes to try to understand what she was going through, you know, as a mother and then not having any support and you're in the system. And it's like, from what I hear, it sounds like they were trying to set her up to fail and try to mm -hmm. kind of make her to go through the part of losing her child, right? Mm -hmm. Because like not having food in the house and being in, in place that's unsafe, that was like basically asking her to lose her kid and waiting for an opportunity to, for her kid to get lost in the system as well, right? Because yeah. yeah. th that's the way, the sense I'm getting from her and I'm looking at my own life and I'm like, you know, my, the things that have turned around my life was way different than her. You know, I was, I didn't get the opportunity to have that freedom. I was actually locked up. And, um, but if I was out there, I would have lose it. If all that stuff that was happening to me, I wouldn't able to survive. I wouldn't able to feel like I was encouraged. And so, you know, or feel empowered to able to take care of my kid on my own. When the people that said they were going to take care of me, they're not even taking care of me. How are they supporting me to take care of my own kid? Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, the motherhood uh, issue is a really powerful one. And we have used Jasmine's um, story in part and with her working with us to, to create a set of materials about psychological safety. So a piece of that is exactly what you were talking about, Lena. Like she feels that the system's kind of boxed her into these choices that are not the choices she'd want to make. They put her in a place where she doesn't feel like she can raise her daughter safely because the neighborhood is not safe. And, um, and all of these things, of, you know, safety, which is a big word when we're dealing with young women in the system, is not just about physical safety, it's about a sense of psychological safety and how incredibly critical that is. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with control, being able to make your decisions and be the person you wanna be, the mother you wanna be, um, and sometimes the system doesn't give you those opportunities. Um, so I appreciate it. The, um, Jasmine's video is one um, example of an IMY tool that we've used. And I think at, later on in the um, presentation, Sharif is going to talk a little bit about how that worked with a group of young women in Massachusetts. Um, but it has led Jasmine's story and others and their um, uh, work in the workshops have led to this set of guiding principles. And all of the IMY tools are sort of filtered through these guiding principles. Under each, we have a number of sort of sub ideas. So this psychological safety goes under self-determination. I was just going to show you some materials on social justice, activism and leadership, which is a, a sort of subcategory, if you will, of leadership. And so we, um, we are using this, and this is sort of the methodology, whereas this is all coming from the young women. So I think in the interest of time, I'm gonna click through. I have, um, I have a, a set of like a PowerPoint that I wanted to show you. And I just wanna start out, it starts out with a young woman named Lucero who's from San Francisco also, who talks about her experience in court. And she is standing in for leadership uh, in, in our materials and she's quite a young leader. And, um, and I'm just gonna start this a little bit and then I'm gonna click through pretty quickly so we can um, move forward to the uses of the tools. But let me just uh, play this. I hope it works. What's it for like, you're, you're, uh, I remember as a judge saying you're a leader in your game. But really, is, I'm a leader in my community, not just a game. I'm a leader in a community. Obviously, I'm doing some right that keeps people Oh, Fran, it's a little bit difficult to hear this one. Let's let's try. Um, Hold on a second. 
I'm going to stop it. Um, I'm, I'm going to click through. So, so it's not critical. So I'm going to click through it. The, basically what Lucera does is she gets up and talks about being in court and the judge saying, you're a leader in your gang, you're a gang leader. And she was saying, you know, that, that to me, that's a terrible thing. And actually I've come to realize through my work with the community-based organization, with the Young Women's Freedom Center, I'm a leader, period. Not a, not a gang leader, I'm a leader. I'm someone, someone comes and, and, and asks advice to and I can lead people. And, and the message is, and I just wanna, um, it, it should not be a surprise to those of us who are working in the system who are working through a positive youth development model. The message is that what she is doing as being a community leader really fits within this positive youth development model. And it's what, what's been called the 60 contribution. And part of that is contribution to community, contribution to civil society. And we have a set of materials that really talks about how, um, how social activism through civic engagement particularly works for oppressed youth and particularly works for young women. And we have brochure and PowerPoint and some other videos that really kind of um, highlight this issue. So, and here is some of the, um, one of the things about IMY tools that we're really being intentional about is it's all research-based. So we are connecting what young women are telling us. So the stories that they have, the experiences that they have, and we're bringing it through research to policy and practice and program that works. And in that way, we're hoping it can be very useful to systems and to other allies who want to persuade people to go in a certain direction um, that's consistent with these materials. So, um, and there she is, and there's the Sarah. So, Let's see if this next video works, and then I'm going to ask Lena to talk for a moment about it. Um, so one of the uh, core pieces of IMY is a workshop, and I'm going to show you a video of the uh, sort of the, that describes what IMY is from the perspective of young women and the workshop. So Brian, let me know if this works. Hopefully it will. And then I'm going to ask Lena to talk about the workshop experience. So Fran, you may, what you'll probably need to do with this one. I'm sorry, uh, yeah. Yeah, before we start it, if you can unshare, and then when you share again, uh, when that window pops up, just make sure to hit those two boxes in the bottom left-hand corner of the pop-up that says to share computer audio. And then okay. we'll be able to get the audio. Did the last, okay, let me try that. I'm gonna try that now, stop share. Okay. All right, and then when you hit share this time, when that window pops up and asks you what you want to share, just make sure to hit those two buttons in the bottom left-hand corner. Your computer sound, okay. Yeah. Got it, okay. All right, let me try that now. Hold on, let's see. Okay, here we go, let's give it a try. All right, great. I am resilient. I am brave. I'm a strong leader. I am why life could turn around 180 degrees. Today, I'm at the I am why workshop. With a room full of women that have been system involved. What do we see wrong with the system? What can be changed with the system? And what is it about the system that has failed a lot of us? It's not just the justice system, it's the school system, the health system, the child care system. IMY is an effort to capture people's interest through the real stories of these young women who have been involved in these systems. Y'all just let it flow because like, y'all all got expertise and everything you've been through and everything you struggle. We'll be painting our posters. On the poster, it's our beautiful faces in an I am statement, like I am change. The idea of this project is to take your qualities, your strengths, the things that are important to you, and try to kind of make them into policies. My strengths are my voice. The way I love. I'm intelligent. Resilient. I'm not a quitter. One of my strengths is like, I'm very forgiving. I am a great mother. I really love that, like, cause I didn't have that. My strength is my community. That's what keeps me going. I first noticed my strengths when I was first incarcerated. The system does find a way to turn our good qualities against us. 
At 15 years old, I got arrested. I just turned 18, so it was pretty scary. I was suspended a lot just because they didn't want to get down to the root of what is the barrier that I was struggling with. Instead, it was just like sent home. I'm more than just someone who struggled. I had a father who was always in and out of jail. I never was behind those bars, but I still felt like it. I was being placed in different foster homes with people like who didn't care about me. I know what it feel like to be living my life at the edge. The stronger the system sees that you are, the more they try to break you. They didn't look at it as another youth that needed help. It was really hard for me trusting people. How can I reimagine self-determination for myself for me to lead my own way? We have a strong voice. It's all about developing that voice in a positive way. If me and my sisters came together and could change the world, there would be more love. Every voice is treated equally. Closing down prisons and building youth leaders. Stop charging youth as an adult and really look at their trauma. It's easier to heal broken children than it is to heal broken adults. Everybody's capable of doing something in this world. With majority of us building our own system and creating things how it should be, I think that would make our world perfect. Well, not perfect, but better than this. We can't just do it by ourselves. We need everybody on board. I am why freedom will no longer be questioned. I am why the world is going to be better tomorrow. I am why the system can't hold me. I am why change is still alive. I am why. I am why. I am resilient. I am brave. I'm a strong leader. I am why life could turn around 180 degrees. Today, I'm at the I am why workshop. With a room full of women. OK, um, so uh, Lena, do you have a, uh, if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit about the workshop experience, having been through the workshop, um, you want to just talk about it? Yeah, it was a very fun experience to be part of, um, just to able to sit there in a room full of young women who've been through similar situation, able to, you know, to share the things that we were going through and how we was feeling towards the system. And, you know, a lot of time I felt like I was the only one, but I wasn't the only one. And um, it was very empowered just to sit there and able to articulate how we would, would want things instead of how other would want things for us. Um, and it was just, yeah, like I said, it was just like, you know, we we all were so eager to just wanting to use our voice to be heard. I think that's the main thing is being heard. And we was being heard at that moment when we was doing this project together. Um, and um, yeah. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. We've had, we are uh, part of IMY is to try and deliver this workshop in different formats. So we have a two day workshop that Lena participated in that we did, we've done in a few different places. That's a, quite an undertaking. And now we're building, making it a one day workshop that we're going to do in Boston and some smaller workshops, instant workshops that we're doing actually in Boston as well in the next couple of days. So, I'm gonna turn it over in a moment to Sharifa to talk about what we're doing in uh, Boston and Massachusetts with IMY. But here are some ideas for how the tools might be used by you, by you, by systems, by other allies. They're conversation starters, and we're gonna talk about having done that in Massachusetts. Uh, it can create a forum for young women to engage with, with each other. Uh, so um, we have done worked on the tools with, uh, uh, a discussion group of young women who are system involved right now in a teen moms program in Massachusetts and it created an opportunity for them to talk to each other about their experience in a way that was a little safer because it was a little bit removed from them having to tell their stories individually. It can be used to start a civic engagement project. The idea is that these tools are topical and so they might be used for groups of young women to, to um, uh, try to make change in some way that's connected to this. 
uh, engage in direct action, which is very related to that. But let's say, you know, you want to go to the state house and you want some materials to take with you. Even the posters that we have that are on the website, we have postcards that could be used for direct mail campaigns. And then it's been suggested to us, and I haven't seen it done yet, but I would think it could be used to train staff that um, in different kinds of young women programs, it is designed to focus on young women's experience so it can sensitize, st sensitize staff, but also energize them um, and, and be used in that way as kind of a training tool. Um, so we are in the pro process of getting this out there and assisting different jurisdictions and sites and, and programs to work with the tools and, and figure out how they work the best, and it's not, like I said, just the communications tools, but a combination of direct action uh, communications tools and this methodology or approach. And so we're doing a pilot in Massachusetts with a number of different groups. And one of them is um, our JDI, our statewide JDAI, which has been very deeply involved in youth engagement. And it's built na very naturally, I think, to using IMY. And I'm going to turn it over to Sharifa, who's going to really talk about that experience. She's spearheading that for Massachusetts JDAI. Yeah, so um, for JDI, Massachusetts JDAI, you know, we realize how important, we've been doing this work for over 11 years, roughly 11 years in Massachusetts, and we really have an engaged youth and family voice at the table. And um, we, st we kicked off last year our conference, our 2018 conference, with nothing about us without us. So how are we making decisions um, about reforming our juvenile justice sy system, our juvenile legal system, um, without youth voice at the table and knowing what their specific needs are. Um, from that, we went through this series of um, focus groups in Massachusetts where the young people spoke about their experience in the system, not just the, not just the detention system or the DYS system, but their experience in other systems. Um, and from that developed different con workshops to discuss at the conference on the young people's need. And um, for anything to go to the other slide. Um, so we, we, we spread in that conference the importance of youth voice and why they should be engaged in the conversations um, when it comes to reforming the juvenile uh, legal system. And as a result, Suffolk County um, decided to take on this work, which is one of my counties in Boston, um, and develop this youth committee. And you know, they started by saying, we want youth voice at the table to influence the work that we're doing in Suffolk County, but it got even bigger and broader. Um, and the young people started to collect surveys about other young people's experience in the juvenile legal system and in the in youth serving systems in general. Um, and that work is then going to support the development of Boston, um, Boston Public Schools professional development workshops that we're working on to become something more statewide, but it's very influenced by the young people's input on their experience in our legal system. And then they are opening this job opportunities and community um, community opportunities that the young fair that they can, um, the young people that are in the system and are going back out in the community can know what agencies are involved, um, what agencies are out there, what jobs are out there to get them involved in positive um, activities while they're back in the community. The, the youth committee also decided to expand to more of a mentorship component um, where young people are mentoring each other um, on, you know, what to expect when they go back in the community, on um, how to become system change agents and system um, and being advocates for themselves when it comes to the system. So it took a very unique turn and a unique twist with the youth committee and the youth subcommittee. And we're looking to make this become more um, across all of the JDI's camp, a JDI sites. We have six sites in Massachusetts and we're open to expand um, further. So the, it's, it's taken that unique turn. Um, but you know, we realized that this, the work in, shouldn't stop with just one, one committee and just a committee or having just JDI ambassadors, um, youth ambassadors. So we wanted to put our money where our mouth is essentially. Um, so JDI came up with $100,000 to fund two projects, so two projects. Um, so all of our counties were able to submit a proposal, um, a grant proposal, on you know 
what they want to work on in their county, what are some huge issues in their counties and what they wanted to work on. And from that, we selected two counties to award each individually $50,000. So the first one was Merrimack Valley Family Services um, in Lawrence. It's a mentoring program within Lawrence High School um, where with partnership with the RISE Academy where teachers and young people are mentoring our young people, especially those who've been involved in um, have family services involvement and have been involved in the juvenile um, juvenile system. So again, very heavily involved with regard to youth and families and them having a say, um, not just a say and not just being represented, but also um, being empowered to engage in their own process um, and being supported in the community. And then the other piece that we, um, we funded is the Springfield Public School um, in South End Middle School. And they are um, doing a peer mediation program again, you know, allowing our young folks to um, to be, you know, to be the experts in their stories and also, you know, taking onus in the changes that they would like to see and engage in um, and, and promoting positive youth development in that in that aspect. Um, another realm, you know, so we, we were able to fund this money, we were able to fund these programs in our counties. But let's not just stay in the local level. How can we expand this even more statewide? And um, our legislature saw how important this work um, is. And so they, the Office of Child Advocacy, um, with the support of the Juvenile Justice um, Policy and Data Board, they conducted a surveys across Massachusetts to our, um, our juvenile justice practitioners. And JDI said, hey, why aren't we you including youth voice in this? Let's get their, um, their, their expertise on what do they see as community um, gaps? You know, what, are, what are some things that are, are missing from their communities that can help them become um, successful? Uh, so you know, I went ahead and developed a youth survey that we sent out across Massachusetts. Um, and we learned that young people are very prideful in their community. So then how are we saying we want to change the community when the young people are saying that they're very prideful in their community? And we realize that, you know, what they're truly missing is um, programs that are very, programs that are able to cater to their specific needs um, and programs that are very successful and are not really equipped with the appropriate folks to really meet the needs of those in the community. Um, so all of this is going to come together in um, a document to be presented with recommendations on services that need to bridge the gap between community, bridge the gaps in the community, um, community-based services, and will be presented to the legislature to fund more programs and to invest the resources that's needed to support our young people. So again, we go all the way back to 2018 when we started our um, campaign in, in in short, really um, about nothing about us without us is that we were very intentional that when we had that conference that we continued the trajectory of including youth voice in every decision point that we're um, that we're looking to reform our juvenile legal system and make sure that voice is not just at the table, but it's engaged and it's a part of the decision, right? Um, because seeing a youth voice is included is completely different because they can be at the table, but their voice is not being heard and we're not listening. So we wanted to make sure that was being um, transcended across all the work that we've been doing. So with that being said, we've realized that when we do youth voice, it's predominantly males, right? So what is going on with our young woman? What are their specific needs? And as we were really, all of this really came about, um, as we were trying to onboard another county in Massachusetts, um, the issues of um, the needs of young women came up and our, our commissioner of DYS and our chief of the juvenile justice system said, hey, this is so important to us. Why not, you know, find and look and see what's out there to support the needs of our young woman. And then this beautiful partnership and collaboration came about with Fran um, with the IMY project and we launched the um, our first step um, to this work was doing a girls breakfast in Westboro our central region and you know we showed the Jasmine video and um, there were young women that were involved in the, the the juvenile legal system who came along 
and they spoke about you know their experience in the system and what 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 do they need from the system to make change and at that breakfast we had a lot of um the the key stakeholders at the table we had our chief of the the juvenile legal system the juvenile justice system um chief nectum we also had our chief of dys um peter forbes i don't know i'm forgetting my own boss and um uh, we also had um, DCF folks there. We, we had everyone who were system involved there um, really engaging with our young people and, and our, our young women and hearing what their specific needs are. Um, and, you know, this, this has now become something that's so important for us to make sure that in everything that we're doing, um, the young woman's voice is represented because it's often very much so overlooked just because the population is smaller, but the needs are so heavy. And we need to make sure we're focusing on that as well. Um, so with that, you know, we, friend and, and, and myself, have been talking about, you know, launching our next um, JDI workshop here in this, on December 14th in, in Boston. And um, from that workshop, really gathering young women to be a part of the JDI process and JDI reform in the juvenile, just juvenile legal system. Um, so from that project, we hope from that workshop, we're hoping that young women would express interest in wanting to continue um, to support the work of JDI and um, the, the, the different work that we have coming, coming, coming down the pipeline to reform our juvenile justice system and really be engaged in that work and really support everything that we're trying to do um, with making sure our young people are being heard and making sure that our young people has a seat at the table when it comes to decision making and reforming our juvenile legal system. Fran, if you want to add anything else, please do so. We've been working so closely on all of this. But. Yeah, no, absolutely. I really appreciate that. So, so, I mean, this is a work in progress, I will say candidly. And the breakfast was great. And our commissioner, you know, Peter Forbes would say that, you know, we basically broke into tables, you know, small tables and watched the video. And there were young women at each table who were you know, um, formerly system involved or currently system involved. And then, you know, even uh, we had some people from the state legislature there as well. Like they come as there, right? And, um, and, and really the conversation was about what in the video resonated with you? How does it relate to your experience? What recommendations would you have for the juvenile justice system that could solve some of these problems for you um, and, and, you know, thinking about it going forward. And, you know, with all of these uh, efforts, the follow-up is key, you know, continuing and making sure it's not a one-off is huge. So some different things that have happened, the Southeast region in Massachusetts sort of embraced this. And with their girls that are in their community, they have a girls group that meets monthly anyway. They're DYS committed girls that are living in the community. So they've used the IMY tools as a civic engagement project. And they focused on education equity, and we have some tools on that. And they voted and decided that that was their issue. We're now going to do a mini workshop um, in the Southeast region alone in detention and some of these community girls are going to come in for it. And that's going to be on Thursday. So again, we're trying to build capacity, build a sense of collective power among these young women and also give them an opportunity to create these tools. I am um, self-determined. I am why girls and young women deserve opportunities, not chances. Um, you know, to really talk about their own experience. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, I was also going to add that, you know, even from that breakfast, one of the things that happened is that um, not only was are there was there follow up with, you know, and follow through with Fran and um, the JDI efforts, but is that our chief, you know, actually, our, our chief of the juvenile justice system actually sat down um, with one of the young women afterwards and um, she exchange information with her and then they connected after the breakfast um on the young this young person's um you know wanting to enter the legal system the juveniles the juvenile legal system with regard to being an attorney and just career paths but having young people being able to meet these change agents and these um folks that are on this another level of engaging this work and just feeling so empowered to know that i have a seat at the table um, and my voice is being heard it was so important to see that um, that happen without um, any kind of force to make that connection. Yeah, I wanted to talk for a minute about another piece of 
uh, and you know, like all projects, you know, we're learning as we go. And and this is, I don't, we don't pretend to know all the answers and there is, I know that people are interested. Is there a curriculum? Right now there isn't. We're trying to think of different ways to support people using the tools and build a curriculum, but that's sort of the direction we're going in. But just to give you another example that's been happening in Massachusetts, Cambridge Family and Children's Services is a um, community-based organization that deals a lot with uh, child welfare system involved, uh, youth, young women, and they use the um, psychological safety and self-determination materials that Jasmine's featured in and Jasmine video with a group of their teen moms, their young moms. And the materials really resonated with the young moms and really it was much like what Lena described, this sense that, wow, there, you know, there are other people there in California that are still experiencing very much what I'm experiencing, this sense of kind of a collective experience. And so trying to think about what to do next, what we're doing tomorrow is Jasmine is going to Zoom call in to the young women in Cambridge, and we're going to have a discussion where they're going to be able to talk to her and and have a, just have a discussion where wherever it goes, we'll see. And the idea is for Jasmine to provide technical assistance, and this is our methodology: is the young women are driving it, and um, you know she's going to call with the seven young women in the Teen Moms program, and just we'll see where the conversation goes and how we can support any follow up. Um, and in the prep for that, you know the the program to their credit was just saying to Jasmine, just be as honest as you need to be. You know, just talk about your experience. They're going to talk about theirs, and and um, one is sort of full honesty, and we'll figure out you all can figure out the young women and Jasmine together what you want to do next, where you might take this, uh, maybe some direct action, maybe some some kind of civic engagement project. But, but it's been really, um, I think, I hope, that experience, I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow. And then we're going to do a workshop with the young women, a short, a two-hour workshop where we're going to use small cameras and small uh, instant photographs, and they're going to sort of create uh, their, do their IMY writing and and again, it's, it's about building power um, in the hope that then that power gets shared by even the program, you know, that is encouraging this work and then, then maybe the system. So, and that's really, um, uh, you know, another kind of case study example of how this is being, these materials are being used. So, um, you know, this is pretty much what I had. I'd be happy to take any questions. We have uh, five more minutes. If anyone has a question or wants to uh, chat in, I'm, you know, I can take a look at that and take questions. Uh, Sharifa, Lena, I can take questions. It's a little challenging in this format, but, um, you know, please do chat in if you have a question. And then let me just end and say, if you want to reach out to us, there are ways to reach out. If you go to the website, there's website, there's a um, place where you can type in, I want more information. And that goes to, to us, to IMY, and then we'll kind of put it out. So if you wanted to talk to Lena, or if you want to talk to any of the young women, if you want to talk to me, do that. And you can also always send me an email. I'm very easy to find, francine.sherman at bc.edu. Easy to find through Boston College and always eager to um you know open a conversation about this so I'll give it a minute but i'm not seeing any questions so there you go so thank you all for attending we really do appreciate it and please do tell your uh colleagues and this material i think will be archived on uh, the JDI Connect site. So, um, and then of course, there's just the website you could go to as well. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.